Okay, we're back. We're going to be doing the heat shock. Ourselves have been on this little ice block for about six minutes, so we're good to go. Uh, before I leave the area, we have a flame on, and we need to make sure that this uh, is not a fire hazard. So we'll just kill the gas. We don't need sterile technique here anymore. So no worries. So I'm not sure. So we have our nine uh, small-scale competent cell preps that we're going to be transforming, and then just two other things. Uh, but this is, again, just the same as any other transformation. We're doing a 42-degree um, heat shock. We're doing it in a slightly different format. We're doing these Petri strips. So instead of going over the heat block, we're using the thermocycler. So you just set your thermocycler to 42 degrees forever. I'm using a heated top. And I'm going to stop my timer and open the block. Put all my tubes in there. Close it all up. I'm going to loosen it up. Hit my timer. And then it's going to heat shock. So the, the thermocycler, maybe we can do an example over here, consists of kind of two parts. It's this part, which is the actual thermocycler. Uh, it can change temperature very quickly. And then this top part, which is just kind of like a heating element. It's kind of like a a George Foreman grill up here just kind of has one temperature, it can't change that much. But this is where the actual temperatures are changing a lot. So this is 42, and this is going to be like 95 or something like that. And the reason I use the heated block is because if any of the cells are not at 42, I want them dead. I want them gone. I don't want them contaminating my small scale competent cell prep. So I'm heat shocking on the bottom where all the bulk of the cells should be, the bulk of the DNA, and if there's a few drops up on top that may be uh, whipped up with a cap, hopefully they'll be killed by this. Uh, it, you know, it might not get everything, but it, it, it helps. So that's kind of why I use the heated top. So let's see here, we're, um, we're looking at our timer, it's been about a minute and 10 seconds. Uh, and the other thing you want to remember is you want to start this thing up to 42 degrees a few minutes beforehand because it doesn't immediately go to 42. It takes a couple minutes to get up there. So it's been about 1 minute and 23 seconds. Ideal time is 90 seconds. So I'm going to hit cancel. I'm going to close the program. Yes. Program's off. I'm going to hit start. Clear. Uh, oh, and then I'm going to pull my cells out. and then one minute recovery uh, on the ice, and then, I'm not, oh yeah, this is my last one, I'll that one. So, we'll give them a little bit more than a minute, and then after this, all we're going to be doing is adding in our 2YP, and letting them sit in the incubator. So I'm going to clear off a little bit of space myself here. And then we're back here <clears throat> with a plain 2IT, which is very susceptible to contamination, so we got to use sterile technique again. And whenever we use plain 2IT, we need to hold it up to the light, make sure it's clear, you can give it a little flick, and then sometimes if there's a pellet at the bottom, you'll see some cloudiness uh, develop. But it looks clear to me, so we're probably good with this. So plain 2IT, again, treat with caution, and use very good sterile technique. <clears throat> So I'm just going to flame everything off, unscrew it, flame off again, and then I'm going to leave it capped but unscrewed. And then I can actually pull out um, pull out all of my tubes. So it's been about a minute, so the, the transformation is complete. Um, and now we just got to recover. So here are all the tubes. And now I'm just going to open everything. And I'm going to be adding uh, 75 microliters of 2IT to each tube. Normally I double the volume, but these things can only ha hold about 200 microliters, and I want to leave a little bit of air in there. So I'm going to grab my P200, set it to 75, and give it a quick flame. And I'm actually going to be double dipping just a little bit, but you want to try to avoid this if you can. So. One, 
two, missed there a little bit, three, flame off, one, two, three, give it a quick flame, one, two, three, and now I'm going to eject. I'm touching, so switch tip. And last one. So cap everything. And I actually made a mistake, I should be capping this first. And I'm making all sorts of mistakes right now. Do you see how my hand is above my samples? That's actually pretty bad practice. I should have not done that. Because if my hands are above my samples, maybe some contaminants could be falling off of my shirt and into my tube, giving me contamination, which is just no good. Uh, so I'm going to cap up my tubes, uh, kill the flame, start my timer over again, and now this goes in the 37 degree incubator for about one hour. Normally we put it in the shaker, but these are just too small to make a difference. So, we'll be fun in here. Take a slight hit in efficiency, but nothing that we're too worried about. Hit start, and then these all get plated about an hour. That's how you do a small-scale competent self-rest.